The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, of course, and author of the the opening call, Daily Newsletter. And it's a little embarrassing because our lungs are doing absolutely fabulously here. The shorts are having a little tough time. Uh, well, one of them is still up, but uh, one of them, we took a 2.2 loss, a uh, small position, but we took a loss nevertheless. Looked to me like that was going to be pulling back. And um, all right, let's get back to our nitty gritties here. We've got, we're looking at the stock market, and um, I had a question about a win. We'll get to that. But let me just go through the numbers here. Just someone remind me that we're looking at win. Let me write this down. I've got it down. Okay. So here we go. The Dow is up 190. So someone asked me, isn't this all about rates? Surely, as soon as we found out years ago that the rates were going to be low, um, that was just buy and hold and go to sleep. And the answer is, when you look back, of course, you can look back. Hindsight is just wonderful. You remember there was that Senator Irvin always used to look back and say, 2020 hindsight. What was he from? Uh, Tennessee? Kentucky? I don't know where he was. From the South. And he had this very Southern drawl, and he was really, he had these very eloquent uh, uh, sayings, little expressions, and they were really cute, very nice. Um, all right, so we're looking at this, and we're saying hindsight, yep. But actually, if you look at it, certainly based on the Chapman Way methodology, we've taken every, almost every one of these Ds and Es. The fourth high, oh, let me just show you. We're right here. So what we look for in the Chapman Way methodology is from an identifiable low bar, you merely count four higher peaks, label them alphabetically, peak A, the next one's peak B, one penny above B would be C, one penny above C starts leg D. When it turns down, it becomes a peak. At the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. What are the patterns we look for? This is Technical Friday. We're looking for the arch and we're looking for the cup formation. Why? Because when it gets back after rolling over, that left side low is become, becomes really important. We've seen that in gold. And if it turns around and goes, breaks to the upside, we've seen that in the QQQs. Every time it breaks to the upside, it doesn't stop. It goes right through that North Carolina. Thank you, Peaky. Yes. Um, and then you've got the H pattern, which says that you can come down sharply and then make the arch. And then it's the same principle. What happens on the left side low? Or you can make the inverted Y pattern. And when it gets to the top, what happens at the top? Just want you to clarify, real simple, Three waves, straight up, straight down, arch or cup pattern. Um, hey, that's what we're looking at. And then the H pattern and the Y pattern. All right, get out of that. And here we go. So we're seeing there's a cup pattern forming right here in the Dow. And it goes cup, kind of like a handle, but it was a breakout pattern. It goes in the Chapman wave. It's a cup and ladle. It goes to at least a, a D or an E. Well, it went to an E with doji high on the 5th of... Uh, April at 26.487, pulls back, makes another cup, breaks out, then pulls back again. Doesn't take out the lows. So it's making higher highs and higher lows. I never thought that would happen because there was a trend line that I drew in for subscribers to say, that's going to be key. We're looking at that support level. And it went right to that dashed line there, that's Chapman wave, inside wedge, target, uh, a support level. And it has not broken down to go to 26,062. If there's a, a time and price, left side, right side, price, time match, that would take you to the 8th of May, a week from Monday. Monday, oh, this is this coming Monday? Wait, well, what's the date today? Today is the uh, 3rd, 4, 5, 6. So the 8th, oh, Tuesday. So it takes you to next week, and that says if it takes out 26,000, what was that low? 26,180. The next stop is 26,062, but this is really good action so far. But look, the MACD is really negative. Stochastic hasn't shown any sign of strength right now at 59%. We'll see what happens. All right, now we'll look at the weekly chart of the Dow. A comment was made, Basil, is this going to be a potential leg D 
where D is where things happen. Look, there's your D. So, yes, if next week, for whatever reason, if we don't make it today above uh, 20, 26,695, then we could do it next week. And then next week gives you that leg D, and then it would be at or underneath the 26,951 high of all time high of October. And we'll have to see what happens at that point. These, this cup and V shaped pattern is one of the most unusual patterns. You can go through chart, you can go through even two minute charts. It's rare that you get this big cup formation, make a top, a new high, and then power almost a one to one to the downside, and then come right back and keep going higher. Usually you're going to have some kind of resistance coming back to that level here. And it's called um, Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent resistance area you break into the 27,070 area uh i don't think there's going to be anything stopping this down for at least a little while s p let's talk about that so what am i looking at here i'm looking at on the upside if the if the dow breaks above the all-time high of 26,951 uh, in the next week and does it decisively we're going to be going even higher. I thought we'd have a, a more time-consuming pullback, but wow, every time there's a, a four-day, five-day, six-day consolidation, bam, buyers come in. So far, it hasn't proved. I think you need to go into this very ugly candle of three days ago, I would say, on a very short-term basis above 26,000. Uh, 570, that would be very positive. So we'll see what happens. Day's young. And in the meantime, back at the ranch, if you look at the QQ, let me go to the S&P, because that's what I said. I'd look at S&P, a little bit more detail. This is a very nice bounce off this, the candle of yesterday, almost gapped up above yesterday's high, which was 29.31.68. And this morning's low was <laughs> in, in, a, in a contract, in a, a cash contract, that's really, you don't often get gaps like this. That, the low is 29.43.35. Uh, I'd say that that's, hmm. hey, 29, wait, 29 high yesterday was 29.31, and today's gap up high was 29.29. Okay, no, we were a little bit underneath that. So we'll see. And this is just leg C in the S&P, and it's gone to a new all-time high. So that resistance is already starting to uh, be pushed up against, and that means that in this V-shaped pattern is going to be way more positive if we don't have to close there, but if we can get to 29.53.58 by next week, that really raises the base. And that says, is absolutely, this is a brand new leg A in a mega bull market in the monthly chart. Whoa, can't believe that I'm actually saying that. <laughs> Let's get back to the uh, market. Yeah, the QQQs, the uh, QQQ bumping up against resistance right now. Very good um, uh, turnaround. MACD is not so good in the, in the daily chart. Stochastic's way down at 70%, but has tried to turn up today. Weekly chart is fabulous in leg C, monthly chart. It hasn't, we'll see what happens. It's just crossing positive as we speak right now. It's zero at a zero percent level after really taking a big dive back in that September, sorry, October, November, December uh, decline. So we'll do the IWM when we get back because these are the parameters that we want to be looking at. And then we get to the nitty gritties of some other questions I had. Don't forget, I must remind myself, someone asked about when. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I was just looking at the E-mini. It's made a whole series of these cup formations. Uh, now the two minutes has gone to a doji D, but I do expect a slightly higher high above the 2944.75 level um, that was made at 12 Eastern Time, 1210. And that would give you a leg D in the weekly chart. Uh, sorry, the week. I always look at this as daily, weekly, monthly. In fact, it's two minutes, five minutes, and ten minutes. I think it'll go to that leg D. And then I think we take a bit of a breather, uh, but really good action. Leg D in the, so it'll be an E in the two-minute chart, a D in the five-minute chart, and D gets extended if it's in the next couple of minutes uh, in the, 10-minute chart. I think it's real close to a little bit of a breather. That's all just looking at very short term. Okay, uh, let's get back to our story. So the IWM, I'm going to get rid of a whole bunch of, of these lines because it just, it'll be a little clearer. I can always put them back. So what we're looking at here is that the cup formation was formed and then it made, right there, and then it made, look, a beautiful cup formation. And that's the Chapman wave. Let me just do this now. I'm going to make this one in blue. I think that's the one that shows up best. Let me see uh, in uh, Tiger in the den and make it nice and thick. Right there, the weight right there and the weight right there, thick. And that shows you a beautiful cup formation. And that's the Chapman wave drop bucket pattern where it goes up to the top, retests it either right under just right on and just above, and then it pulls back. And what happens after that is very important, makes another cup like a little handle, and that handle takes you, 159.50 was the high on the 25th of February in the IWM, Russell 2000 ETF, and what happened was it went to 159.61. It went fractionally high and then pulled back, and that was on the 29th of April. And then it was looking like it was pulling back. It was not bad, but it was pulling back. And underneath the 14-period moving average yesterday, then it closed just above it and just on the 9 period, the little green line there, the 9 period moving average. Now, if today it goes above 159.61, the high of the 29th, I have to, this is the beauty of the Chapman Wave notation because it tells you very quickly, usually very quickly, that you are wrong because it says you can't go above a G with letters. There's no H. You have to either look back to say there's a recycle or you look back to say, oh, I missed something. 
that is not really, a, or you have an alternate count, like I've got here G slash B, and that says that that E is a top with a down arrow, because the MACD and stochastic pullback, but that doji candle of the 22nd is a turnaround candle. That's how I love doji candles. And now it's turned around, and this F is not really an F, it's an F slash A, because it's still under the previous high, so it would be gray, F slash A. I'm not changing the color now, I haven't got time. And then a gray G slash B, because it was under, or was that the one that went three cents above? Yeah, this one we just just above uh, eleven cents above. So that's is all right. Now you can go blue G and say maybe you've completed this move, or this is a brand new leg B. Well, it pulls back, and if it goes one one penny above the one fifty nine point sixty one high of the twenty ninth, you have to say that's new leg C. That's very bullish. It says next week the IWM could be leading the pack. Even now, it's up one point two eight percent. The Dow's only up 0.70 percent, 0.7, and the uh, S and P is up 0.8. So this is leading, and that's really a, a very important factor. Something I was going to put into my newsletter this morning as a potential, but I really needed to see what happened. Look, when the earnings, when the jobs report came out this morning, the uh, futures ran up huge, and then they took a dive. And when I left uh, to the, my the health center just to get a little bit of exercising in, I was looking at the monitor, and then all of a sudden it starts turning back up again. Well, that's because there was a decision to say that um, the Fed, even though jobs number is low, that means there's going to be inflation because it means now there's come. This is the highest percentage of turnover that I've read for a long time, where people are taking, they're moving from job to job. You don't do that in bad times. You keep what you've got because you don't know if you're going to get anything else. Now they're saying, hey, to heck with it. Now you're seeing many companies starting to add all those accoutrements, you know, like the gym and the this and the that and the ping pong table. This is what there'll be inflation very soon. However, right now, we're not worried about that. And interest rates, the TLT, look at this. That's what I was wondering about yesterday. And I was talking about, and I said, this is a little unusual. I would have expected the markets pulling back. The TLT should have been up in the 125s. Instead, there was a weak session yesterday. Today, it's only up 17.17 uh, .17 at 123.48. So something about this picture is saying, hey, rates are not the issue. So I haven't thought rates are the issue. The issue I've just said, for me, the rates have pulled back very sharply in the monthly uh, TNX 10-year, TNX 10-year monthly chart from a peak D at 32.48 back in October of last year. It pulled back very sharply, 3.248 to about 2.356. I mean, that that's a big move, right? It's about a third. So that says. Rates are just kind of in the range. Even if they bounce now, it's not a big deal. It's been, yeah, look, I've shown this chart so many times. Look where we've been. Interest rates shouldn't be an issue. It's what the market perceives the Fed is going to do. So right now, I'm not seeing enough bad news for me to say, okay, we want to go really heavily to the short side. What I am looking at is we wanted short positions as trades. I'm looking at, at what to buy. In fact, we bought something uh, a couple of days ago because it's been acting so well and um it didn't act i mean it acted pretty nicely in terms of what it had done over the last couple of days but i wasn't happy because it pulled back just a little bit more than i wanted boom today's just exploded to the upside uh already giving a a, a very nice percentage gain but that's just on on a couple of days but i am saying that the bullish side the long side has been working really well, which is the reason why we've tried to keep our positions and maybe add to some of the positions. We've got a bigger position in two uh, two issues that we've not had before. I, I the, the financials are doing well. Um, you know, I've mentioned Bank of America that we've been in for quite a while since the 24th. And here it is at 30.80. It needs to get to 31.18 for leg D. And then you start looking at the left side, left side, right side price time match. This is a beautiful plumb line from the August high of 2018 at 31.92. It comes all the way back to the 26.61 area. Oops, no, the last time we got in was, uh, sorry, we got in a little higher. Uh, we had been in, tw at, in 24. Um, let me just double check here. Uh, 
Oh, no. Oh, of course, we've been in for quite a while. We got in just uh, in December. Right. Um, so this is this has been a, a, a nice position. And um, so, you know, 20 percent. But that's not the issue. The issue is that the XLF is appreciating what's going on right now and is being appreciated for the first time. I know a lot of people are saying, ah, oh, the banks, they, they're kind of done. It's not the issue. This is the one. I'm not so sure about that. I think that the banks are going to be the surprise in this coming half of the year. Hey, could be totally wrong, but the chart is really, this is an impressive move in the weekly chart, testing the very strong downtrend, uh, and that's very important. Now, back to the story that we were looking at. We were looking at the TLT. So the TLT is telling us that maybe, and the VIX, together with the VIX, is saying, you know what? This is really pretty good news. Wow, look at the VIX at 12.93. Below the teens, that's usually bullish for a triple digit move. It's more than that. It's a, a very good triple digit. Dow's up 208. I'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, looking at the E-mini right now, remember I said I wanted one more leg to the upside so we could get that D in the five-minute chart? Well, now we've got an F in the uh, F in the two-minute chart right up against resistance at 2945s. And you can see that in the two-minute chart, automated Chapman Wave resistance points. Uh, they could disappear if it goes much higher, but it looks to me like this is just an area that you got to look for in leg D in the in the five-minute chart and leg E in the um, that is the ten-minute chart. So we were watching this. This is part of the, today's technical Friday. This is what I'd be looking for to say. Okay, 
really a good move. All the technicals are suggesting that this is strong, but this is exactly where you'd expect some kind of a, maybe a couple of points pullback. Uh, it could get deeper than that, but it hasn't turned yet. This is about the area that I'd be looking at and saying, okay, uh, if you were wanting to take profits or whatever it is, or you're just about to leave the office or whatever, and you're saying, you know, I don't know what to do, then you can put a trading stop, raise it, because this is exactly the moment that says, if there's a turnaround, this is these are the letters that I'd be looking for to say, okay, and then the pullback, because it's so strong in the in the two minute and the five minute and the 10 minute, I, I, I wouldn't be looking for very much. I'd just be saying, look, uh, if you were wanting to take some profits, raise your stop or take some position off now and keep the rest. But this is exactly where I expect some kind of a pullback. And all it could do is go back to the uh, five minute, nine period moving average of 29.43 to the 14, which is 29.42. Uh, that's the way I like to look at things. I, I, that's the way I should have been looking at the Dow all the time saying, hey, um, what if? You just stick to your, your uh, technicals. That weekly chart, look where the nine period moving is. It hit it earlier yesterday. Uh, it hit it exactly. Now it's bounced off it in the weekly chart. So everything here is positive. So um, even though I have been looking for a pullback, and this is the deepest pullback we've had in about three, four weeks, uh, it's, buyers just keep coming in. Buyers just keep coming in. I, I'm still looking at this and saying I'm seeing a disparity in some of the technicals of the daily charts uh, in all the indices right now are still pretty weak, except the IWM. Have a look at this. IWM, the MACD is way better than the others. And the stochastics turning around the on-balance volume is, oh, there it is. IWM is now at 159.78. So this is now leg C. I, IWM is looking good. So for anybody looking at that, it says that I have to now change that plus sign to a down arrow, and now I can put an up arrow here, and it says, could be choppy, but there should still next week be a leg D, and now we've got an extension of leg C above this down downtrend line. So, so far, this is very good action. I like it. I love when one of the indices takes over from some others that are starting to show a little bit of weakness. So in this particular case, um, we'll see how next week unfolds, but it's nice to see some leadership coming back into the Russell 2000 small caps. Next question. Okay, next next thing I want to look at. Oh, so we're watching this closely. We'll see if there's a bit of a pullback here. Nice lesson. Um, we'll see. Okay, question I had. Okay, so the SMHs, which is the semiconductor index, I said I'm looking for an arch formation, a lowercase h. This is the Chapman wave right here. Oh, I don't have to draw that. I've got it written down. This is this pattern right here, the lowercase h. And why? What was the question? The question was, it was stated in um, weekly versus daily. No, no, no. Please explain why you feel so confident the daily chart of the SMH will fight and win the strong weekly chart in making an h pattern and time a match approximately to the 110s. Well, okay, let me go through that. Of course, that is an analysis. It doesn't mean to say it has to happen, but this is what I drew, and this is what I was expecting, that, that there is enough technical deterioration in the daily technicals itself, then the MACD and stochastic, for me to say, on a day like today, I would have anticipated if ever there was a chance for a breakthrough on the upside, this is the day for it to happen. And I was expecting that that would be proved by the SMHs, the Semiconductor ETF, the Market Vectors ETF, pushing into the 118.50 area, maybe even 119. Well, it's up 59 cents at 117.04. It's up 0.51%, um, half of what the S&P is. And, that's it. and it hasn't taken out the left side high yet, the 117.88 level. So my analysis says, Maybe I'm wrong that there isn't a full, com uh, uh, complete reversal to the 113.49 area, but the fact that it's lagging technically today, to me, is a sign that there's probably going to be a peak C with a sec. Look at this. In all the weeks that we've had, 30, whatever, I don't know how many, since the green candle, let's include the green candle of December, 
green. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Let's call it 20 weeks. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not, I counted it quickly. In 20 weeks, the SMHs have had 1, 2, 3, 4 red candles, but that's not 4 peaks. It's only had 3 peaks if there's no new high this week. That says to me that um, there's just a slowing of the momentum. So we had a Chapman Wave squash, which I recognized, but we didn't. I did not have our, our, my subscribers traded correctly. Uh, we should have just gone along and said, that's it. Until the MACD uh, shows weakness, we just want to stay long. I did not do that. I apologize for that. But in the meantime, what we are looking at is the stochastic was at 93, which is very good. But in the Chapman Wave squash formation, there's a real big talk given by the stochastic, the, that acceleration of first gear to second gear, then the green line of the moving average, the MACD um, moving average convergence divergence, the nine period differential takes over. And then that becomes the momentum play. And that usually takes you to a C and then you get a pullback as the stochastic pulls back and the MACD has to take over and usually gives you a little bit of time before it makes D. So that's my thinking, number one. And number two is the daily chart has already made a high of 120.71. The, the whole story with advanced micro devices and land research and all buying everything back it hasn't helped yet. Days young. We'll see what happens. But I'm suspecting that there will be a pullback. And at some point, it will be recognized that the billings in the semiconductor index are really way behind the price at all-time highs just over the last two weeks. And the billings are at two-year lows, as far as I can understand. But maybe the April billings have really started to show a tremendous improvement. Okay, so that's my answer there. I'm wrong if you start to see the, tra the trade, the SMH trade, at a above 118.75 with the MACD turning up and stochastic crossing really positively. I'm going to have to say I think we, we're going to be looking at a double top at minimum. But at this particular point, I... I still am staying with, you know, we're doing technical analysis, and that's what I do. Hope that helps. Okay, question I had was, oh, when? W-I-N-N. And I was fascinated, interesting, because over the last, I think it's a year, two, two years, um, I didn't realize that a person that I'd met was actually very involved in this whole thing with Win. And I mentioned to that person that, um, um, oh, it just came across for other reasons. I thought for other reasons that people were talking about to win. And I said, you know, if you know Boston at all and you know the politics of Boston, right in the end, it comes down to who you know and what you know. And then it comes down to money. But I probably put money first. And just about a week ago, I saw that person. I said, you know what? They'll get passed. But you, you see how much win has to pay. Oh, they had to pay if you're in the CD million, market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when and gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dot.
dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So we're looking at that uh, two-minute chart. I put a down arrow because it did start to close underneath the uh, two moving averages there. And the MACD turned down, stochastic turned down. But it really hasn't done anything. I want to see uh, this light blue, uh, the, the green moving average close under the black one. And that will suggest that there could be a little bit of a deeper pullback. But so far, you've had a pullback of time and a little bit of price we'll be watching this and it's a leg d potential peak d in the next uh, two minute five minute bar we'll be i'll come back to that uh just you know some technical analysis here so so in other words when so in fact what happened was a newspaper this week had said uh when uh, everything was passed and they are um i think it was 32 million or something probably uh a um, couple of days worth of uh, gross profits. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But yes, it did get passed. And I mean, come on, you build a building, and you obligate to all those people that you've hired. I, you know, it was just obvious that they would get passed, and that the, the best thing there was to, I guess, for the uh, the uh, Boston uh, Gaming Commission was to just say, "Yep, we'll slap on another big fine. Just keep adding the money to it." And uh, that's what they did. So that's going to be interesting. So the, the issue was it's in leg D right now. And the weekly chart, leg B in the monthly chart, all-time high was over 200. It drops down to the 90 level. Uh, and now it's trading at 147. That's a really good move. So I'm suspecting, and I've got this as a phantom peak C right here. It's unusual. I hardly ever do that. But I think it absolutely is appropriate right now. So that high that was made, it's almost like the market, made a high on the 151.50 on the 29th of April. And now it's holding the 14-period exponential moving average. If at any point in the next week it starts to close for two days underneath 143, then I think it's made at least a short-term top. If it goes above this high of 151.50, I'm going to say that's not a D then. That was the original C, and then you got the D. I just wanted to be ready as I'm doing the analysis to show you how I like to do these things because being aware is really good. Um, so, yeah, it's, I, I think this is very good action for when I, I'm not talking about the Boston. I have no idea about, you know, the casino. I've never been in a casino, so I have no, no clue. Um, but I am looking at this and saying they've done something right, and they've done really well since the gap up of the uh, 1st of April at uh, 123.90 low, done very nicely up till now. So keep that in mind. And uh, so I would not be buying it here. I'd probably want to wait maybe the 135s, and then let, just give me a yell, and we'll have a look at it together. Uh, the other thing I'm I'll asked about is the FTSE uh, GB DOW. This is the chart pattern. That's correct, but it's based on the Dow. Um, Dow, Dow Jones UK stock index made a peak D. See, this is what I was thinking. They've got 
complementary moves here. The 423 high in the FTSE at 337.72, you'll have a different number, but that was the high. Had a Chapman Way flat base restart. I discussed this one day. You remember, I said this is a uh, Chapman Way flat base restart. In fact, I should have called the Chapman Way um, unconventional flat base restart because it went lower after it made that B, E slash B. It went back down, but it didn't take out that little bar after the D, so that's why I didn't do it. But this says when it goes through a D or an E, watch out, because when it comes back, it's liable. And I even drew the pattern in, an arch formation, and I drew the left side, right side price time match. And yesterday, exactly, I didn't even see this. It took it out. So that was saying to me, yep, I, I think that we could be see some digestive formation here. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, that's, that was a question there. Please, on the E mini, what, what, what am I doing here? On the E mini, yeah, I've got the E mini, but the ES, this is really interesting. So if you look at the ESM 19, you'll see that was, let me just do this, 2961.25 was the high of the first. 2961.25 was the high of September. Isn't it amazing how these prices can come in to the penny, in this case, to the quarter because of trades in quarters, um, and it hit it. And that's another reason why I thought we'd have a bit of a pullback. So this is a very good candle after the doji yesterday. Just make sure that by Monday or Tuesday, if we don't go much higher than this, only about six points altogether to the 2952, 2949-2951 level, and then have a reversal, or we don't have any rally further than this Monday or Tuesday, if there is any price move down to the 2930 level, I'd say be careful because now we are having a digestive phase. That's just the way I'd look at it, and uh, we'll see what happens there. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I, I don't have the 10-year government role. Oh, government role. I, I showed the chart. Um, I, maybe the two-year you were looking for. The two-year. Where? Where is that? Yeah, two-year went to an A, B, C, D. Yeah, two years at 106.35. This is year, the U.S. Treasury note continuous contract. This is not the yield. So this is up at the 200 period moving average. I think you can mess around you. So the question is, uh, yesterday uh, you mentioned MNR has the greatest appreciation potential. Let's look at MNR today. Um, yes, nice candle. It's at 13.81, um, up 0.14. Uh, let me see. Has the greatest potential out of WPC and STAG? Yep, I'm, I'm, that's the way I'm looking at it for you. I'm not talking about shorter term for other people. I'm looking at it for you, Peaky in the Den. Uh, WPC, WPC is, so you, MNR is Monmouth Real Estate Investment and WF Carry Inc. is WPC. Also had a pullback and now it's down 20 cents. I just think this is the one, this is the best. If you're in it, don't do anything, just stay long. But in terms of percentage appreciation, I think that that for you, because it's a longer term one, when it gets to moving, stag is also very good. But these are at all time highs. This is the one that's lagging. So if you're looking for capital appreciation because you have others that are giving you dividend, this is the one that can give you capital appreciation because it has just a one point a role in terms of uh, the low of 13, and it's kind of close to the high. So technically, you want to be waiting for this to pull back more. But in your case, 81, 81 cents on a $13.58 stock, I, I'm I'm really prepared to say this is where you want to enter right now because you know the risk. So I hope that helps you. Um, that's that question. What was the other question I had? Uh, the, uh, Basil, when was the last time you saw a V formation in the monthly chart patterns? I have seen them, but this this five months, four months has been absolutely incredible. Um, talk about a V formation. Look, uh, V is Visa. Visa took out that left side high around about 145-ish, 143, and went right through. It took a quite a quite a dive to 121 in December, and now it's showing you 162. I'm calling this, I, I've called it leg F. There's no way that I should call this a leg F. I really have to call it F slash B because there are so many charts that I can show you that have this pattern, which is unusual for monthly charts to have a chap wave in, um, instant restart. So this is E slash A, F slash B, Visa. 
trading at 162.52, made a peak F top. I think it's digesting. Hey, digesting. Let's have a look what happened here. Yep, there it is. We're still in the digestive phase. This is uh, without taking, making a new high. This is the longest period it's been in this phase for a while. In the two minute chart, it's still just only at 29.44. I think the, the, the two moving average could cross negative soon. Gonna be watching this closely because the technicals are very weak. 29.44 is the what, what we're watching. 29.43 will be the one that says it's pulling back. I'll be right back. Dow's up 195. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Trapp. And let's just do this final segment. I'm going to do what I call light, my own lightning round. i got a couple of questions. I think I've done most. Oh, uh, IYT, what is the question? Uh, IYT is doing okay. Yeah, IYT. We, we, we're along IYT. This is the... Um, and the iShares Transportation Average ETF trading at 197.27, up 3.17, up 1.63 percent. See, this is this is the tough tough stuff that we've got here. Got uh, one uh, particular issue that is just uh, it's up three percent just uh, from we bought it yesterday to today or to two days ago. We've got another issue that's up 0.83 percent today. Uh, another one's up point. 1.41 percent another one's up 1.19 percent and um our short position one of the short positions is at exactly what we shorted at and the other one is um within three cents of what we shorted it at 
So this is, uh, you know, this is, oh, and what happened to the other one that we were looking at here? Let me just do this. Uh, I don't even remember. Um, let me just do this before we run out of time. Oh, there it is. Uh, that is uh, three cents down from where we bought it. So and that's an experimental one. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, if, if the, the longs are doing so well, just why mess around? And I, you know, this is what the market is teaching us here more and more and more that you can't fight this bull trend because you've got to be really short term if you're short. And we've had profits short term, haven't taken them because they've been so quick. So this is what you've got to keep in mind. So I want you to just do a couple of things here as we're finishing. Look at this. Let me go through my alphabet that I often do. Right here, A, Agilent. Uh, a is um, Agilent Technologies, a fantastic company, made an all-time high a couple of uh, weeks ago, trading at 79.23, brand new leg, uh, B in the in the daily. B, which is um, Bonds Group, fabulous move. A, A, B, C, D, E, in leg F, or a brand new B, really nice. That's the pattern I was looking at. Uh, peaking in the den for the monthly chart. This is what I said would have been really positive if it hadn't stalled that stock we were looking at. This is what you want to see. That's very oh, I didn't finish. See your city group. Hey folks, check out my opening call over the weekend. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom. I'll be back on Monday. Have a great week.